Alrighty, well welcome everyone. It's five o'clock on Tuesday, June 4th for the Middlesex Select Board Meeting. Welcome to all the board members and welcome to our guests. Um, if you are here and on the agenda, just announce yourself when it's time to talk um, and you address the, the board. Um, and just raise your hand if you have any questions or need any clarifications. And thank you for joining us. So our first order of business is approving the minutes of May 21st, 2024 regular meeting. Action likely. Is there any discussion about the minutes? Changes, questions? No. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll motion to. Okay, Zara, Zara moves. Peter seconds. The approval of the May 21st minutes. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Alrighty, just make sure that we all sign those minutes. The next is approving the agenda for today, which is on a long piece of paper because we have our select board goals on there now. Um, is, are there any um, amendments to the agenda? Okay. The, yeah, well, the only thing that I wanted to add, but I don't know if Eric's not here. Um, when we talk about the highway department, I wanted to talk about the digging on McCullough, the permit, and that we need to, to do an RFQ. And Eric had indicated the that bridge. he was. Yes. Okay, we can, I guess that we can add that to the um, highway department update. That Does that make great. sense? Okay. I got some of that. Oh, you do too, okay. You have something you want to add too, Click. I do not. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so is there a motion to approve the agenda with uh, our, Zara's edition of the discussion about an RFQ? I'll make that motion. Okay, Randy moves. Second. Zara seconds. All those in favor of approving today's agenda with um, the addition? Say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Woohoo, we can keep going. All righty. Um, considering Ann Connell, are you Ann Connell? Hello, Ann. Ann. Connell, hi. Hi. Um, request to ditch across East Bear Swamp Road so Washington Electric Cooperative can install a buried power line. Action likely. Okay. So I'll just clarify that it won't be Washington Electric installing. It'll be me. They don't own the underground work. They own only the overhead work. So. Um, whatever understanding or agreement with between me and the town, not Washington Electric and the town. Okay. Is there, um, so we, is there, is this, does this require some sort of permit or, do you know it, Sarah? <coughs> no, this, is a, this is a novel situation for the, for the town, as far as I can tell. Okay. Um, and Anne wanted to call and ask, you know, what can, what, what do I need to do? And I've talked to a whole bunch of people about this, including the Washington Electric and our zoning administrator. Washington Electric's concern is just that the line be no fewer than five feet down. If it's um, less, it's, it's less than five feet down. If it's like three feet, it needs to be in some sort of concrete conduit. <coughs> the uh, concern, I think, for the town, for us, or possibly the landowners going forward is making sure that future landowners know that there is a power line there underneath the road and also that the town knows that there's a power line. So let's say we decide to pave that part section of East Bear Swamp, which, you know, we want to know that that's there. There are flags, but um, what I was going to propose to the board is if the board approves this, that the next step be that we do a uh, memorandum of understanding that would be attached to Anne's property and also to the property across the street with some GPS points. That's what WEC recommends. Just say the board has approved as long as these conditions are met and this is where and this is where this line is going to be or the bus. So or some sort of note. So, but I, that's that's why we're here because we didn't know we've never dealt with this before. I'm sorry, could you clarify why you're doing it yourself and not It's why? an option. I, I'm not certain if that's how it's going to happen, but going overhead has other complications. So, And know, they don't forward. bury lines? No. So when people bury lines, they hire an, an outside yeah. People bury lines all the time. I don't understand, Sarah. 
<laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah, but the, but the what? Yeah. Want me to yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, Washington okay. Electric does very much. I don't know who does the work. The only issue for the town is that the town has a right of way over this road. That's why it's coming for you now. Oh. And I was told by the engineer who came out to look at the pole and the knee and everything that it would be my work. They would not perform that work. Right. It would be me. I have, uh, I have buried lines on my property and I had to install all work to the pole. Exactly. And then, actually, you have to install it up the pole. You have to buy all the stuff they tell you to buy, and they will connect to the transformer. And that's them. Otherwise, it's me and an excavator and an electrician. OK, so this is really about not that it's that they won't bury the line, that it's somehow on our right of way. Exactly. Gotcha. So, right. The town has a right of way across where is the road. You're, but this is the first time it's going under. Gotcha. I don't know, Steve, do you know any other place that's where power lines are under? Do you know another place in town where power lines are under a public road? Where that they do go under the public road? Yeah. You know where they go under the public right away? Yeah. Yeah, that's different. But this is underneath the road. And Washington Electric said the, this is the, they, these requests used to be unheard of, but now they're becoming more and more common. So it's probably something we're going to have to deal with. Access or something. So what you're suggesting, Sarah, what you've learned is that we need to create a memorandum of understanding um, that describes Anne's property and any adjoining properties or adjacent properties across the road or however whoever's a, around there. Right. Um, and the GPS with the GPS coordinates of the line and that it's, do we have to write down the um, the conditions of how I, the line I is buried? Just, I would just say, you know, the conditions as approved by, you okay. uh, know, that, that satisfies Washington Electric and the road crew, just even like okay. that, you know, the high, the road form and something like that. Okay. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to specify, oh, it's three feet or five feet down. I mean, yep. it never yep. hurts. Right. And, and the location and distance, and yeah. Nobody really knows exactly how deep and how it was buried and what kind of encasement conduit is in. So why yes. not? <laughs> and where would that be housed, Sarah, for anyone to know this? this is probably the store. I'm sorry, what? Where would it be housed? I would, yeah, what I would do is I would record in the land records. Yeah. And I can pay $15 for, for it. And okay. And we, uh, we can bring it to the next meeting and sign it. And then uh, I'll attach it. I'll index it with your property. I'll right. index it with Kira's right. property. Right. And then we're done. And then Anne will go talk to the Kira's and get her own easement from the Kira's. Because right. Anne gotcha. owns to the center of the road. The Kira's owns to the other side of the road. Side of the center of the road. All we're doing is saying, as a town, and has it right away, we understand it's there. The board approved. We're going to meet these conditions. Bye bye. And now, when we're all dead, and they, and they go and they repave the road so we can say, whoa, 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 there's a power line there. Gotcha. Okay. Randy. Two things, two questions, I guess. Um, one is if this is going to be recorded and it's, it moves forward, if there's any type of language around responsibility of maintenance or any future works in there, uh, just thinking about that. And a uh, question for Anne is, um, you're not certain that this is the route that you're going to go. Right. This is just an exploration of what's possible. Yeah. Is that what exactly. I'm understanding? Correct. Thank you. Okay. So did you catch that, Sarah, adding yeah. in a piece around yeah. uh, maintenance? Vic, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Go ahead. Um, my question would be, uh, uh, we some of the pr things that have to be done it has to be down five feet, or if it hit ledge, which they probably will, it has to be encased in concrete. Uh, you got it. And Anne says she's doing it herself. I assume she's not out there with a shovel, but well, like she said, higher. Plant a garden. Shovels just don't. But anyways, who? So so who? So you have this criteria you got to do. Who's going to say, who's, who's going to give uh, approval of that it was done that way? In other words, who's going to inspect it? Who's going to sign off on the work that it's done in that manner that's specified? Who does? Yeah. I did ask Kyle Sands, the Washington Electric Engineer, who's been coming yeah. out. He said they don't need to inspect it. 
Okay. Because it's mine. <laughs> right. So right. I'm happy to have the work inspected if. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a. I intend to get a licensed electrician. I don't think I'm required to because it's residential service. Mm -hmm. However, that is my intention. So mm -hmm. I suppose if I got a licensed electrician, they could. Okay. Attest to. It's. You know, they could put their stamp on it. Yeah. It's kind well, of like, won't it be sort of in conjunction with our road crew too? Because won't we be closing the road or something to dig? What, say again? Won't we be closing the road to dig? Somebody will be closing the road to dig something, well, a trench? I, you know, I haven't gone. gone into details with my excavator yet, but you know, they, a lot of them they carry around these giant steel plates to put over their work. Right. If it's uh, left open for any period of time, and there's only two possible folks who might be wanting to go through there. Okay. I figured somebody's got to get through. I'll ask him if he can have the steel plates ready and he can put them down. Yeah. I don't know any other way I thought about that. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really know a better Randy way. and then Sarah. Uh, I just want to clarify Vic's uh, question. I thought you were actually referring to like having having whether it's you know the road commissioner or somebody from the uh, the highway department you know no. signing off on any kind of you no. know work that's done within the roadway to make sure it needs our specs to mm -hmm. put the road back the way that it it should be mm -hmm. um I, I think i have a bigger concern with that than you know whether it, it's three or five feet or whatever yeah. um meeting that standard um yeah. So I would suggest that that's, that's included. That, that our road crew does a, a final inspection of the finished product right. yeah, on the surface. That your, that your excavator or your contractor would work with Eric or whatever and, and say, hey, I'm starting to you know, reconstruct the roadway um, yeah. and schedule a meeting between those two. Right, okay. Um, and so I was talking to the zoning administrator about this, and he said that there's a house down on Macy Road that has a leach that needs a new leach field across the road, and they're going to run a pipe underneath the road. Um, so they're talking about this. And in that case, Eric is going to come down and just look at the pipe and everything. But I'm just wondering, for future reference, if maybe we need to formalize a process or an application. If you're burying at something underneath the road, what you got to do? So. But in that case, Eric is going to come down, look at it, and make sure it's okay. So. Are you suggesting that we have a future policy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I Let's add it to our goals. Okay. Oh, did you get my email about adding the goal of the website, or did I make that up in my head? You, you told me to. Okay, yeah. All right. Peter's got his hand up and Vic has his hand up. What's well, Peter the lines the, policy. Well, Peter will be first. <laughs> oh, sorry, Vic. Yes, go right ahead. Okay. No, uh, what I was what I was uh, thinking more like is when you uh, you get a permit to, uh, for from uh, like A and R to put your your septic tank in your sep your septic, not just tank, septic, you know, and your engineer comes out. You said you had an engineer just comes out takes a look at it before they backfill it and backfill it. I mean, once you get to the top of the ground, uh, if you want Eric to go look at it, you can go look at it anytime. Yeah. Who That's would that I, be? Who would the engineer be? Yeah, would it be an engineer? Is that what you would, like an electrical engineer or something? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, just do well, it. There's the electrical work and then there's the dirt, earth work. So I would say the, uh, the electrical contractor who's licensed, he's not an engineer, but I'm not 100% good enough. clear, yeah. They would attest to what they had installed, and then maybe Eric, I, I like the idea of Eric and my guy talking about what, how, what are we putting back? This much of this type of material, this much of, you know, just there yeah. are all kinds of specs on road, <laughs> roads. Yeah, that's a good and, idea. Um, you know, this is even assuming it's not solid ledge and I don't just bag it and just say, well, oh, no power, not doing this. But, oh, I'm just going to keep exploring until I hit a wall that I can't get through. But we'll find it. Okay. Are there any other questions from anyone? I have a question. Yep. Who writes the memo of understanding? 
Probably Sarah would start it and okay. just review it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Right, Sarah? <laughs> what did you, you would you would create the MOU. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? So is there a motion to um, approve creating an MOU as we discussed um, regarding uh, burying, potentially burying a power line under the roads right of way? For East Bear Swamp. Is there a motion for that? Okay, Randy moves. Is there a second? Second. Zara seconds. All those in favor of approving said motion, say aye. 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 Okay. Peter also said aye. The ayes have it. Congratulations. <laughs> I hope you don't find ledge. Uh, that would be a miracle, but. Yeah. And I'm not sure how to find out other than to start digging. Five something. feet's a long, a long I way. Don't, Washington Electric wants three feet. Oh. But. On one, you know, the road drops off. So if I'm going to maintain three feet, I'll probably have to go. You have to go deeper. Four feet or yeah. more along the road because mm -hmm. just how the land is right there. Thank you all. You're welcome. So I guess I don't need to come back. We'll just work through that memo yep. of understanding yep. until. We yeah, and I, I guess probably next meeting we'll we'll s approve awesome. it or something. How it's written. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It'll be like a draft, okay. and then yeah. you can fill in all the yeah. details. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks You're welcome so to stay for our exciting really Middlesex Select Board meeting. Don't blame you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we are at 525, but really it's 519 or 18. Are we okay to move ahead with the highway report? Is everybody okay with that? Sure. All righty. Um, so we have a highway department update, discussion of road commission, I'm sorry, conditions and FEMA work via DIRT tech update, action possible. We'll get a little subcommittee update from Zara and um, there's some action unlikely there. We'll talk about Zara's RFQ and then we'll finally end with reviewing Jeff Koons' correspondence about the road through summer hours. Okay, so take it away, Steve and Vic. For the road, for sure. the highway department first? Yeah. Okay. Um, so since the last time we met, um, uh, as you remember, our truck, our new truck was uh, at Kenworth, and um, they got us a new long block, new engine, except for the parts and pieces that come off. Should have that in about a week, they said. Uh, the excavator from Beauregard's um, will be out. Uh, probably by the 1st of July, about a month. The only thing that they could take it right now, but we don't have a digging bucket. And uh, Eric's thoughts are that that's probably what he's gonna use it for ditching, so kind of like a digging bucket. They're working on uh, grading and gravel. Uh, Baldock Road, West Hill they put gravel on, East Hill uh, down where it comes off the uh, blacktop towards Montpelier. And they also are putting pot, uh, fixed. They took the remaining coal patch they had and put on the potholes down in Shady Row by uh, uh, Wood Road. And uh, when that truck comes back, uh, when it's repaired, and if Pike has it in, uh, in uh, South Burlington, they're going to bring back another load of uh, uh, coal patch to repair that. Could you just refresh my memory on what coal patch is? Coal patch is a mixture of uh, aggregate and asphalt that can be placed uh, cold and compacted, hmm. as opposed to you know have a pavement. Oh, the hot, yeah, hot stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, Let's see. Oh, um, we met with Jaron Board from the Agency Natural Resources Stream Alteration Permit about McCullough Hill. He said we could amend the plan that we had because uh, if you remember last time we could, the plan just read 50 feet downstream and 50 feet upstream. And I think we discussed uh, at some point about taking some of that gravel uh, on the on the east side and taking, taking that much material out, shoring up the, the, the west side of the brook with some larger stones and uh, 
maybe drop it down a little bit uh, as much as we can. Down by the, the bridge area? Down by the bridge area? Yeah, so down by the McCullough Hill Bridge Road, uh, bridge. Yeah. And um, we also talked about uh, uh, Lower Sunny Brook Road. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, he said that uh, uh, we'd have to see if, uh, if uh, removing the uh, gravel, uh, gravel uh, bar in, the, McCull in uh, the Great Brook would, uh, said you really should do a feasibility study to see if it's worth removing, would justify, the, the cost of removing it would justify the benefit of having it removed. Are you talking about this 50 Fifth down, 50 foot upstream? Yeah, down? but it might be go up a couple hundred feet upstream. Okay. I think the original proposal was 200 feet. It each was, side, but, when right? you, but they only approved 50 each side? That's yeah. correct. That's simply said correct. So he, he wants us to essentially run a cost analysis on whether or not that work would be more economical than bridge replacement. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? No. No. No, I'm not. Sorry, Zara has a comment. So I believe what it, what it is is that the permit was, that we wanted both sides and the permit was only for one side. So what Eric and Vic have told me is that we really, it doesn't make sense to scoop out one side and have let the rest be there. So the, that's why he's trying to get the permit extended. The problem is, is the permit is only good until October 1st of this year. So we would need to get an RFQ if we're going to do the work this year. We're either going to need to get the permit extended or we need an RFQ to get the work done before October 1st. Yes, Randy. Does this include shoring up the bank that's existing? No, that's a work? different project. Okay. That's a different project. It is, it's right there. A different permit and everything. But it's a, I don't know that so you need a permit for I, that. I, you know, I don't want to, I don't mean disagree. I don't want to disagree with Dara, but I think it includes both. Because he looked at both. We fixed both. Eric did touch it up a, uh, a little bit where it was washing behind and maybe going into the, uh, into the uh, road, roadway. So I think we can do both. Most certainly. Uh, is this a part of, is this, how is this going to be paid for? How's it going to be, be paid? part of the, that? So the the why I thought they were different is because the 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 drop off there that needs to be shored up that is one of the RFQs for the hazard mitigation okay. that I'm filling out. Whereas the the digging out the stone is different. Is, is different. And okay. we all and I also just to add uh, had a conversation with Eric when he showed me that space um, about reusing the gravel and I reminded him that not weed problems so if he is going to dig that up it's going to be set aside somewhere for a couple of years before it's crushed and reused to make sure that there's no not weed. Okay so okay I got it and that would be something we just did internally uh, this digging okay but we need a permit is what I understand. That for the you know better. For the, for the, for the digging. Yeah we'd have to work with with Jaron and, okay. and, and, and get an amendment. And as far yeah, as the work would go, I, you know, anything could happen, but I was thinking that, or our, we were thinking that uh, there would, we were hoping that we were gonna get a grant, but we, but if we don't, we'd just have to, okay. you know, hire, some, hire somebody to, uh, to uh, excavate it and. Uh, You're not gonna use that We couldn't thousand? use the new excavator? What's that? We couldn't use the new excavator to do it ourselves. We might okay. fall in the river. Yeah, anything's possible. Okay. We're not. Uh, yes. Mind Jeff. you, there is a standpipe that yeah. goes down and into the, the river there. Right. So when you start digging, it, right. that is, and there's a, I think a metal plate that goes over top of that that right. tries to protect it, but okay. just yeah. whoever digs there, we want to make sure that they don't dig up that standpipe. I'm sure. Uh, I think Eric will probably. Is that for fire departments? Yeah. 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 I thought I saw one. So, okay. anyways, that's so, that. all right. Just a quick question. So then, what are you doing with the twelve thousand dollar grant that you just got for Better Roads? That has to do with hundred watt. Well, that wouldn't work for that. No. Well, it's the road. It's uh, uh, you have to use that uh, municipal road grant for on uh, segments that are uh, connected. 
for like ditching, culverts, et cetera. Okay. So and we'll Eric see. and I were going to, until he got real busy this week, uh, take a look at the map and figure out where uh, it would be best interest of the town to use that $12,000. We have not done that yet. Okay. Um, okay, so then uh, the other thing was down on, uh, we've talked about, actually it was Steve's idea originally on Sunnybrook Road where the two culverts are to, uh, to uh, eliminate those two culverts and if we could purchase the land, get a right of way, whatever, to just bring the stream straight down through and then we wouldn't need those two culverts, which would be a lot of money saved. So um, on the right, the left hand side as you're driving up? Correct. Yeah. That's the property you're talking about? Yeah. <coughs> just before, just yeah, if you're that. driving up just before the culvert crosses the road. Yeah, part of, yeah. Part, of, part of it's that Rudy Howland estate. And part of it is, uh, I can't remember the private owner's name right there. But, but here again, uh, Darren said you'd, uh, you, we would have to uh, probably uh, uh, hire the services of a design consultant engineer to uh, check out the feasibility and, uh, and also uh, the, uh, well, the feasibility, which would include also uh, seeing if we could actually get that property. Um, oh. What's that? Isn't, isn't there a new, isn't there like 90 million dollars in hazard mitigation grants that's available Millions? that could be used for that? I think so. Yes. Yeah. That's what we talked about last week. I think so. Who's going to apply for that? Sorry. I'm, I'm applying for all the hazard mitigation. So if you get me, the, you'd have to get me the area that it is, the cost of it, just like basic who, what, when, where, why. And that's that's it's a pre-application, so it's really simple. We're throwing in a bunch of um, pre-applications. Twenty, a bunch. Five, yeah. <laughs> really, that many? It probably will end up being that okay. many. Yeah, if I could get it, get everybody's estimates before yeah. the June twenty-first deadline. Okay. And the final thing is, uh, this last week, uh, Charles Pelcher terminated his uh, employment. We'd all like to thank him for his service. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. All right. Anything else? From the room? Okay. Steve, uh, whoops. Yep, sorry. So with buying the excavator, um, we've got to get a loan. Yeah. So um, I wanted to ask, should we use any of the money that you have set aside for the asset fund? Do we have $50,000? Do we want to use a portion of that at all with getting a loan? Or? You know what we have sitting there in the asset fund? There's the first time it was 2024, so it's going to be 50,000 upwards. And then there'll be another 50,000 going in July 1st. Okay. Um, I think we should. I mean, that's sort of the point of this is to lower our borrowing costs. So, how much are you thinking? Um, what are you guys thinking? 25? If we're going to. Yes, sir. I think if we're putting another 50 in, in the next month, right? I think we could go as high as 40. But do we have a sense of what the interest rate is? Not yet. I gotta make those calls, but I just wanted that's my first I needed to find out what we're gonna be about half percent at least. Peter, did you hear our question? Only part of it. Um that we were um Cheryl asked if um we wanted to consider using a part of our asset fund, you know, that we set aside for capital purchases. And as of July 1st, we'll have 100,000. And so do we want to put some of this toward the excavator? I suggested 25s are thought as high as 40. Um, do you have some thoughts on that? Just to lower the, uh, the note. Borrowing? Yeah. I would, be, I would be generally in support of that as long as, as, long as, uh, as long as it makes sense from the overall, you know, we've done that in the past many times. Dipped into that. Point. Now, we've just got to be careful, that's all. But yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. Vic, what are your thoughts? I was just wondering, I don't know what the interest rates are. I mean, okay. you said you don't know, and um, I'm sure it's cheaper than financing it through uh, the uh, 
voted or, or through case. Right. I'm sure. But yes. I don't know. I I don't know the numbers. Yeah, I don't. This hundred thousand dollars is for everything in your CIP program, isn't it? It is. It it's seems called, like like what's it called the the capital improvement plan, yeah, but it's for the it, it's basically for the the bulk of any large purchase that we're going to be pulling. So future dump trucks, you know, the the whole nine yards. Um, I have seen some special interest rates on small equipment mm -hmm. through case. I don't know if, if there's a, a size cutoff for that, uh, where it was zero percent for 48 months. But I don't I don't know as if that applies to the bigger equipment this that, be like a that we would be. We have to ask that here. question. So um, asking. Yeah, absolutely. If that was the case, I would say we don't touch that money and we borrow it all. Um, and you know, let use somebody else's money. Um, so depending on what that interest rate is, would right. weigh in on how I voted. Can can? Yeah, Zara. Okay. Well, I don't want if he goes first. Okay, Nick. <laughs> can can uh, Cheryl and Eric and I work together and figure sure. that out and come back with a? Uh, we have a month. Come back in sure. two weeks. Okay. Um, first, Sarah, and then Peter. Zara. So, first, I just wanted to remember, remind everybody that we have something due in August. That that loan is due in August. Do you need any of this for that? The uh, we wouldn't be able to use this. Oh, okay, we wouldn't anyway. The other thing, then, I get sorry to cut you off. The other thing that I guess what I would say is I do have this sheet, and we do have an annual allocation of fifty thousand dollars for asset and equipment of that CIP, just see of the one hundred and six. Yeah. 106. So 106,000 total and annual allocation. 10 goes to buildings, 50 to asset equipment. Oh, well, five to garage, just for six to bridge, just for buildings. Yes, for Peter. 50. So just, you know, the whole purpose of that account is to have money available to reduce future borrowing. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about: is using some of that money to reduce future borrowing or current borrowing. Um, I don't know what the right amount to take out is, but it's not like we're, you know, if, if we if we use it for this, we don't have it to help us buy the next truck. But I I agree with Randy. I mean, if if we can get a very competitive interest rate, maybe we should borrow it. But if the interest rate is relatively high, I think we should use some of that account to pay down on the excavator. Um, okay, so we'll just talk about it next week. So, Sarah, can you put that on next week's agenda to yeah. have action that we may vote on using something from our, our fund? All right, thanks, Cheryl. Did we answer the RFQ before we moved to? I mean, you guys are aware that there needs to be an RFQ, and I just don't, I don't know who puts that together. Um, Eric, in two years, hasn't done it, but I think he said that Steve probably knows how to do it. For, for what? If it needs to be done. And that's for digging the, the, the um, gravel out from under the bridge, oh, okay. which we are permitted for. So, so we did, okay. But the permit ends October 1st. So, that, so that's what we covered. Okay, I thought it was yeah. something separate. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else about the highway department before we move to Dirt Tech? Okay. So Dirt Tech and Steve. And FEMA. <clears throat> so Dirt Tech started on the 13th of May, which was a week later than what they had originally planned. But uh, anyway, they started on Macy Road. They've completed all their earthwork on that road, uh, so they just have the road surface left. Uh, they are on Wood Road. All the culverts are in. Uh, they are right now. They're they're doing some ditching and uh, stone lining. And they'll end up, they should be close to the ditching and stone line by the end of the week. Uh, and then they'll have the road surface left on that one. They've done the earthwork on Shady Rail, which was just some riprap areas. They've completed that. So Shady Rail just has guardrail left. Is that near um, the bridge on Wood Road where that was that's falling where, apart? Yep. Okay, that's the riprap. Well, they did riprap there, and there were a couple other spots down the road okay. uh, that had washed right up to the road, so they rip wrapped that. Okay. Is the um, standard these days to leave all those trees and things that are falling into the river, is that 
that what they do now? They leave them. I, I, you don't know. I don't know. I'm, okay. <laughs> I think those things should be removed. That's my opinion. Uh, hold on, Steve. Eric, I think Peter has a question. Peter. So, um, as we know, we have a group of people up on uh, up on Wood Road who are very concerned about how these repairs are done. And uh, one of the things they brought up to me that I'd like to think we're paying attention to is before we put the gravel down, the finish, the finish level to the road, that we grade that we grade that road, crowning it up and angling it to uh, get the water where it needs to go before we put the finished gravel on top. And I'm hoping that's going to happen. And I realize that is probably. The grading part is not in dirt tech's contract. It would be something we would do with our own grader. And I don't know where that stands, but I, I just hate to see us let dirt tech go ahead and, and finish it up. And then we go up there with the grader and, you know, change it later. Let's, let's get the road where it needs to be before we put that gravel down, I guess is my point. Vic has a comment. Eric and I talked about that this morning around 7:10, and uh, he plans to go there Tuesday before they do any gravel on Macy Road, and we'll continue up Wood Road. How's perfect. that, Peter? That's perfect. perfect. That's you. perfect. We haven't, as we all know, we haven't always done that in the past, so that's great. Thank you. When you say go there, you mean grade? Say what? When you said Eric is going to go there, do you mean he will grade the road? Well, his schedule, okay? So they're no, not. I just think the word go is it go? Is it grade or is he just going to visit? What's the action? What's the action? Like they when he goes there, the what's road. he going to do? They will grade, grade the road. They will grade the road. They will grade, they the, will road. grade the road, shape it. Thank you. Thank you. Ken Davis has a question on Zoom. I just have a comment. I drove up Wood Road this afternoon to meet a friend, and uh, she was with another. A resident on Wood Road, and they were both really happy with Dirt Tech's work and the Dirt Tech crew themselves. They were just like, just as a, a comment about, are they happy now? At least those two people were really happy with Dirt Tech's work. Thank you, Ken, for sharing that. And I will say, I biked on Macy Road, and it was fabulous. There's all the tons of new culverts. Yeah. And nice ditching and stonework, and it looks good. Okay, keep going, Steve. It so <clears throat> they uh, worked on Bulldog Road. They replaced two culverts. That's we have two culverts to replace, and a little bit of ditching. And I did not check this afternoon, so I'm not sure where they are with the ditching and and uh, stone lining. But it was a very small amount, and then Bulldog Road will be done. They are also working on Portal Road, uh, doing some lead removal, and they're going to be starting on ditching on there. There's a bit of ditching on Portal to do. Um, so, the one big thing on Portal would be the box culvert. Um, that can be done afterwards. I mean, that's that's a long lead item. Anyway, I'm not sure where that stands, but that's from the state of Vermont. Um, what we are going to do, or Dirt Tech is going to do, is uh, once they start like Monday or Tuesday, they will start on the, the finished road product uh, after Eric is graded, and they'll do Macy, Wood, Government Hill, Culver Hill, and then possibly Portal. And that will complete all of those roads. Complete. Other than, again, the box colored on, on Portal. Uh, let's see. Is that covered? The only other thing was all seasons excavating is also working um, to finish their contract from last year. And uh, they are currently on uh, Upper Sunnybrook uh, doing lead removal and ditching. Uh, I would expect them to complete all of their contract and the change order before the end of the month. 
Yeah. Until we still have to pay them, right? Pardon? <laughs> I said we had to prepay them, right? We still have to pay them? No, we did not prepay them. <laughs> All right, how much do you think that's going to be? Um, I don't know. I'm getting into the thing to make sure that's one of the things I'm trying to do on all of these projects. All of our, our, all of our items were estimate. Uh, there's some that are going over on lead removal, maybe some are going over forward installation. But we can make that up and keep the project within reason by that top code. That's put on, we can shorten that or lengthen it or whatever to try to keep all of our projects within price range. Ken Davis, you have another. Davis has his hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Steve for allowing Dirt Tech to build a staging yard in his field there. It's amazing. And also, just my personal impression of the design work that he did on Wood Road is really good, and I'm assuming that will just play out all over town. But it's just I, – I just wanted to thank Steve because of everything he's put into all these projects. Well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, um, Randy. So I, I just want to tack on to Ken's comment about – the staging area. Um, I've heard lots of communication around it, and the perception doesn't look good for the town. To have Steve as the project manager for this work, and then to have that staging area put on your property, I've heard lots of comments and concerns around just the perception. And it creates a conflict, I believe. No, I, I disagree with that in the in the sense, you know, uh, I don't think there is a conflict there, and I am also not charging to protect anything for that. Just yeah, and and I'm not trying to say things aren't on the up and up or anything like that, but it's the outside. I haven't. It's I the haven't outside heard perception. That. I mean, I've had a lot of people stop and ask. What's going on, and you know, want to know if I'm building a barn or what's going in, or but, and I tell them what's going on, and I, and I haven't heard any negative stuff at all, not from my end anyway. So. Yeah, I have to say, you know, um, my well, and I don't want to segue into the road committee, but um, what I've heard from town people is that we don't like that kind of negative thing coming from the select board towards the road crew or committee. I personally think it's awesome that we now have the town uh, area, which is up by Shady Rill, as well as then down here, we've got two locations for Dirt Tech to use, and it makes complete wow. sense to me that um, Dirt Tech has both the area at Steve's and the area at our town. I don't think they no. do have the area at the town shed. They don't have no, the they're project. cleaning, they're using their material up, whatever's left at the town shed, so that they'll be out of Eric's way for any future use. So that was the thinking, at having it at your place, is that they're not driving six miles of dirt roads, that they don't have to, to stage their stuff? So. Uh, we'll let Vic answer that question. No. No. I think this is my, my perception of it. They started in at the town garage. Steve, Eric, and I had a pre-bid uh, meeting here, uh, and one of the questions was, do you have places we can dump material? Can we have places that you can uh, stage? And we said no, and we do not want, uh, no, we don't want to get into to waste areas because uh, it's, there's people around town that will take it, but make your own deal. And no, we don't want uh, you staging in our, uh, our site at the town garage because it's too confusing. And we, uh, we have plans for some of the area, according to Eric. That's, uh, so, so it would be a conflict of you know, what they wanted to do. Steve, uh, Steve offered his place and and uh, and they had to have a place to go uh, we looked at or Steve looked at Hickory's 
Uh, I think Johnny's. Johnny's, but there's just not enough room. There wasn't enough room. So he, he did that. Uh, so he offered his area, and they pushed the, well, they did what you see up there. And, that, and you know. So how did they start, though, at the townshed? And now they they still have stuff there? I guess I don't understand. They had a little sure. stuff there. They were, uh, you know, I said to Eric, um, well, we've had that discussion. Um, I said to Eric, you know, when we sat there and told all these contractors that they couldn't, couldn't use the town garage and then turn around, the first thing we do is let them use it. And Eric said, okay, I will go tell them to take their stuff out. It's my impression that he started out telling them they could put a few pipes there. Don't know how it got carried into all the stuff that they had. I have no idea. It's, 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 a, it's not an issue. Uh, their foreman came over and said to me, uh, asked me if he, uh, he said he would get the stuff out as soon as he could. I told him I realized that it was a mistake on both parts for either asking or giving. And so take your time and when you get the stuff out, just don't go back in. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's, um, I, I guess, and Sarah, you did this already, did you not? Um, or somebody, I think we talked about the fact that um, it might just be good to explain, maybe in the road committee, like when you're doing an email about the road subcommittee, mm -hmm. you may notice that there's, you know, some trucks at the bottom of Center Road. That's where Dirt Tech is setting up their work to, and holding their equipment, right? Because I think that what Randy may have heard is that someone thought Dirt Tech was doing work for you, right? Because nobody knows. And so that was where there might be a misconception of like, oh, Steve's getting some extra favors or Steve's getting paid by Dirt Techs to stage there. And so there's, a, there's just, you know, a, a general, you know how the gossip mill is. People just make their ideas up without cl getting clarity. So that's all. Right. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to a ask you to ask Sarah, Sarah, who has offered to do dirt tech on the reg. Do you want to put that? Yeah. All I need is a point of information. Somebody to contact me and tell me, what, you know, that this is what dirt tech is doing today. And I can obviously just put that on the website or put it on the board forum. It'll take you two seconds. It doesn't matter. So, do you want to? What I'm asking is, I'm, what the information you just you just asked me. Uh, if you're doing the dirt tech updates, do you? Yeah, want maybe it just say, makes sense that that by gets the way. added in. And oh, by the way, you might notice all this, and that's well, called the staging area. I guess the question is, who's going to do the dirt tech updates, and where would you like to see them? Um, would you like to see them on front porch forum? Not everybody reads I, front porch forum. I think front porch forum is good. I don't go to our website very often to see. Okay. I think more people see front porch forum than go to our website. Okay. So, and so we should do that. I should do that. I don't mind doing it. Thanks. Sure, but who's going to, maybe Eric will communicate with you what he's doing. It's just a week, right? You're not going to do this every day. I don't think. I mean, you that's can, too much work. Yes, Vic? You can tell me, and I can convey it to Yep. Yeah. Or Eric. Okay. So okay, you okay. can figure that out. We'll make one person your contact, and we'll talk to you. I see yeah. somebody call me, and he's like, you know, I'll tell you what, we just do it every Monday morning. Yeah. Something. Call, say, this is what we're doing this week. That's this fine. Is what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a plan. Call. And then you just say subject to change. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so then if you can like if you can do one for this week, yeah. can can you? Then the first thing would be, hey, you've seen the staging area. I will put that on before the meeting ends tonight. Yay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I did notice that like I think it was Marshfield's website for some reason I was on there and they they do sort of show a you know a um, schedule of for the summer, I think it is, right. really. The only problem I have is that I have it only in PDF form, which would be a link. If I could have it in a different form, I just cut and paste the schedule on it. just don't have that. That's a part of our goals. My new goal is to add a new website. The website sucks, yeah. Yeah, and that'll make it easier for you. OK, any more updates from Steve and Dirt Tech? Any more money coming in, Sarah? Or Cheryl? Or, sure. sure. We have some pending, but it hasn't been Well. Um, Oh, we did get the money. <coughs> I gave it to you on that piece of the did you know that uh, on Rich Road we did get the money back for that. We got the fifty two thousand oh. seven more dollars. From FEMA? For FEMA for Rich Road. Yay. Okay. And also does it wasn't something else obligated? What is this? We haven't gotten it. Yes. Oh these are the two hundred seven of the two hundred seventy two. Boulder uh, like Brook Roads, right, Steve? 
Rick Rove is obligated? Yes. That's great. Alrighty. Randy had one more comment. Yeah. So Sarah made a comment about this coming across as being negative. Our job here is to relay the information that we're we're receiving. Yep. It wasn't designed to be negative to Steve. There's a conflict by definition is potentially the perception of others. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm relaying. Excellent. And so I just want to be clear that this isn't made as a negative comment to Steve or the situation, but the fact that we're receiving communications around people's concern and how they view things. Right. And the conflict that, I, that I'm pointing <coughs> out is that perception. So I just want to be clear about that. And, and I'm just countering with what, I've, what I'm hearing from the community is that sometimes the road crew's biggest um, hurdle <laughs> is the select board. And I'm new to the select board. So I am not trying to make enemies here at all. I'm just relaying what I'm hearing from the community as well. Thank you. And I think a big part of this, too, is just open communication, right? And just being transparent about what's going on. You know, it, and I, I think that, that the more we are communicative, the more people won't be at, you know, won't necessarily be coming up with their own ideas about what may be happening. That's all. Right. Did anyone else from here? Did I see a hand raise? No. Okay. Any more on the FEMA? All right. So we are next on to uh, reviewing correspondence from Jeff Coons, Read the Road Crew Summer Hour. So Jeff wrote us a um, letter. A long letter. And is this something that the public sees, Sarah, or should I read it? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to do. You can, I can attach it to the minutes. You can read it now. You can, uh, people are welcome to come into the office and, and look at it. It's a public document. Right. And I yes, also sir. replied back in writing. I'm sorry? I replied to Jeff's letter. Uh, oh, you, Sarah you told me it was OK to I, I yeah, sent to, you a draft of a letter. Oh. And I did reply back to Jeff, as yeah. well as had we had a wonderful phone call together. OK. Just Do to you, let you guys know. <laughs> Is that a printed document that we have? It's in the file. Yeah. Oh, it's in here? Yeah. OK, sorry. You want my reply? Yeah, your reply. Um, what would the board like me to read it aloud? Yeah. And move through it quickly. Oh, but this is okay. I'll read it aloud. It's not. To the Middlesex Select Board, um, subject: the new four-day work decision. I'm writing as a deeply concerned taxpayer and town resident about the decision you voted on Tuesday, 21st May, changing the long-standing policy of the four-day work week for the road crew. I believe it was the wrong decision and was pushed forward by Vic Dwyer simply because he stated, "quote I don't like it." End quote. As a result of this misguided and short-sighted decision, I fear there will be a 75 to 100 percent turnover on the road crew this summer. Considering how hard it was to find employees before this action, it will be even harder going forward, especially when potential workers hear why the current staff went to other jobs. Where is that going to leave the town? Are Vic Dwyer and other members of the select board going to do all the road maintenance? Despite Vic Dwyer's strongly stating, quote, I don't believe this is a benefit, end quote, I completely disagree. Not only is this a benefit to the employees, it is a cost-free benefit to the town. In addition, the town actually gains about one hour and 15 minutes to two hours and 15 minutes of productive work time. This is because there's one less day of morning prep, break, and shutdown time. Additionally, studies show that four 10-hour days are more productive. There were comments made that, quote, people of the town complained about seeing equipment parked in the yard at 3.30 in the afternoon, end quote. This was not backed up by any hard evidence. My question is, were these comments made by people who enjoy the benefit of working from home and are, or are retired? Another justification for limiting the policy was concern about what happens when a bad storm can, comes in on Thursday night and the road needs to be worked on Friday. My counter to that mindset is, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, my, okay, my counter to that mindset is what happens when a storm comes in Friday night and work has to be done on a Saturday? In both cases, the road crew would be called in. Yet this will be overtime, but it would be overtime in both cases. 
and no one can control when storms are going to hit. One and only work, uh, I'm sorry, one more example of poor justification was saying, quote, employees would put in for two hours of vacation time and only work for eight hours anyway, end quote. Again, a poor justification since the town can't deny vacation requests, and I'm sure it doesn't happen every day or even every week. One possible solution proposed was, quote, well, maybe we should require them to take a minimum of four hours, end quote. Again, this is a poor solution and won't make it easier to find qualified employees. Quite frankly, I got the feeling from most of the select board members they don't value the employees and think of them as unskilled labor who can't find a job anywhere else and must be micromanaged. This is a poor mindset to have and couldn't be further from the truth. I don't think any of the select board members are willing to step up and get their hands dirty keeping the roads passable. One has to ask, if the road crew can't go to a four-day work week, why is the town clerk's office allowed to work a four-day work week? In addition, why do the select board, why do you, the select board, don't feel the need to be in attendance at every meeting? You were elected to serve the town and be at the meetings two times a month. How do you explain when board members miss meetings? I believe the select board should readdress this issue on the 4 June meeting and decide to make a permanent decision that the road crew would change to a four-day work week starting May 1st and ending 31 October each year going forward. It does not have to be tied with the start of a week or pay period because the total work week is still 40 hours. And yes, this can be advertised as a benefit when trying to keep employees or hiring new employees. Quite frankly, it comes down to treating the road crew with the respect they deserve. Sincerely, Jeffrey Coons. Thank you, Jeff. And would you like to discuss anything, Zara, with your follow-up with Jeff? Or? Um, Vic's reading my follow-up right now. Do you want me to read that sure. out loud, or do you want to pass it to you to read? No, you can read it. I wrote, Dear Jeffrey, thank you for being so passionate about the well-being of our road crew. Not every member of the community understands what hard work it is or, concerned with, or is concerned with retention. I agree they are a good crew, and we want them to be both happy and proud of the work they do for this community. I was just with Eric, our road foreman, for two hours touring some spots in town that needed help so we can apply for grant money to pay to, for those fixes. As the newest member of the select board and the chair of the road subcommittee that allowed me time to ask and listen to get a deeper understanding of what the road crew does, what they want, and what they need. I am not personally opposed to a four-day work week, especially knowing that they are really on call 24-7 and based on how many long work weeks and overtime they put in during the winter. I too believe that having a work-life balance is crucial to doing any job well and often leads to better work performance. I also believe the select board cares about this road crew and are doing their best to make the right decisions for both them and for the community. We have formed a road subcommittee, which I am chairing, so that the select board can have a bigger picture of what is needed, find ways to receive funding for it, um, what the road cre crew needs, and how to make the rest of the community members as caring about those needs as you clearly are. So I want to thank you for this letter. For me, the biggest problem at last night's meeting was that I had no idea I was going to be asked for and had no time to learn the history of what or why or how before I had to help make a decision. I am glad we acquiesced to this request, and I think this question can be addressed again, but I would personally like to more time to hear from more people and have thoughtful discussions before this comes up again at the select board. I believe in a win-win situation. I believe in win-win situations though, uh, through communication and negotiation. I have personally been involved in many of them. Since we have already said that through Labor Day, I think we should table further discussion until July and allow everyone to express their views and learn about uh, the benefits. This is an important, but hopefully not urgent decision at this point. In the meantime, I'm working closely with Eric Vick and 15 other community members on the road subcommittee, and I want to assure you that all of us have agreed that keeping the road crew happy and being more in touch with their needs is very much a priority. We hope that we can make every member of our community as respectful and as aware as you are about the hard work and effort the exceptional road crew gives us every day. Please join us in person, blah, blah, blah. Thank you sincerely. Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Jeff, would you like to make a comment? So, sure. So since the, the two weeks since the meeting, um, I've seen in Front Porch Forum, Washington Electric is looking for heavy equipment operators, lots of them. I've heard on the radio and then checked the website, Vermont Mechanical has eight position areas that they're hiring for. Three of those have four-day work weeks. And the most recent was uh, information from Northfield that they went to four-day work weeks and are extremely pleased with the increase in uh, productivity with doing the four 10-hour work weeks. 
So from just those short um, examples, the four-day work week seems to me, number one, it's a zero cost benefit that the town has to pay. We don't have to pay anything for it. It's a benefit to the workers because they get to have the four-day work weeks. We benefit, it actually is an increased benefit to us because we get more productivity from them for the 10 hour work week or the 10 hour work days than the eight hours. Um, as far as the uh, taking leave, I would ask to look to see if that's been an issue since Eric's been in charge um, and and see where that is or if it, it happened when they initially started that was a problem. But considering how leave is accrued, it doesn't seem like that could be something that happens on a daily, weekly basis because you just don't accrue enough vacation time. Uh, if I say leave, it's my military. Um, so I, I just, it, it stumps me as to why a cost-free benefit to the town is essentially look at being denied to the road crew. I, I just, I do not understand the mindset of that decision. And I, I would like to see it go from 1 May, either 31 October or 1 November. Thank you. Paul Sermonera has a comment. Um, I just wanted to add in, I uh, no skin in the fight at this point, but um, Charles, Jay, and I, I don't know about Eric and the newer guy, everybody up to that point had been hired with the knowledge that we offered four-day work weeks during the summertime. I still have my advertisement from the 2009 position when I originally applied at the town, and right in there it says four-day work weeks. Like I said, I can't speak for Eric and the new guy because I didn't hire them, but Jay and Charles, they were both hired under the assumption, full disclosure, that they had four-day work weeks as kind of a fringe benefit. So something to keep in mind for current employees as well. And was that also, Paul, because my recollection, and I could be totally wrong, was that it sort of migrated in both directions when I first started on the board, which is now 10, 11 years ago, that it actually was more um, like Labor Day to Memorial Day, and that it got extended on both ends maybe in response to other towns doing the same thing. Do you remember that, Paul, or not? Yeah, I'll be honest, Liz, even when Gary was here, there was there was definitely nothing formal. There was never, never anything in writing, never anything that I'm aware of that was necessarily documented in board minutes or, or kept in record or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> to, to some people's point, like, like Vic had mentioned last meeting, you know, once once the time change happens and you know, we get to that time of the year, obviously it's counterproductive. There, there's no need to work in the dark. It, it becomes counterproductive. Um, you know, but right now the sun is up at, you know, 4, 4, 20, 4 30 in the morning, um, you know, and stays light in, until nine o'clock at night. So, um, you know, have, having some, I think having some days that uh, scheduled dates that offer that information in there, something that the board can, you know, look back on. Is, is definitely something to, to have some clarity with it. All right, thank you, Paul. Um, Charles and then Zara. Um, when Shane was here, the board just uh, actually put it down in writing in one of the uh, minutes. It was from May 1st to November 1st. Okay. That's the first time I remember seeing it. Seeing it in writing? At, in writing. Okay. And I did go back and look at that recently. Okay, Zara. So I did um, ask Ken to do some research for me. He's on the road committee. Um, we called around to five different towns, Callis, East Montpelier, Waterbury, Moortown, um, and somewhere else. And um, they do have four 10-hour days. They do go Memorial Day to Labor Day, um, just so we know what other towns were doing. All of them? Uh, uh, one of them did not go to four tens, but that's, that's a, like okay. a seven people crew and, and what have you. So there's enough people to rotate through. Um, originally, I had hoped that we could kind of come up with some win-win-win scenarios in which 
<laughs> Vic loves this. Uh, I, originally, I was hoping that we could make a, you know, kind of make a deal where if, because Dirt Tech is doing what Dirt Tech's doing this summer and it's very different than other summers, had we had the road crew intact, if they could have not only done their maintenance and normally, but also fixed a couple of mud spots that Eric um, had figured out that Dirt Tech is not doing, like if they could go above and beyond for us and for the community, that the, we, then we could extend their 410s another two months. That was, that was the negotiation I had in mind. Unfortunately, now that we're down to three. Yeah. Um, yes. It, it's Shelley. just my personal opinion is you start taking away a benefit that doesn't count cost the town. We're going to lose some really great people that keep our road safe. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's another misconception when people are <coughs> complaining because they see them not there on Friday and maybe putting something out there to explain why. Yeah, yeah. Not communication. Yeah. communication yep. again. Yeah. Um, yes, Peter. So I remember many discussions about this four day work week over the years. And we've gone, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in our discussions. And we've always, in the end, affirmed the four day work week. Um, I would just suggest. We are currently undergoing a complete review of our uh, handbook, and that is part of the handbook. And I think it should be considered as we as we deal with the handbook for this year. We changed the end date of the four day week work, work week, but we affirmed the four day work week. So I think we've heard loud and clear uh, different opinions on this. And I think we know that the road crew would prefer to have the four day work week. Um, I think we should consider it as part of our, uh, part of our personnel or our handbook review. The other thing I would say is, you know, just like any other uh, employment benefit that we offer, none of those are guaranteed forever. When we hire somebody, uh, they are hired subject to the benefits that are in place at the time they're hired. They are not guaranteed those benefits forever, whether it's the health insurance plan or the way the retirement works or any of the other, any of the other benefits that they receive. So uh, to think that because somebody gets hired with a four-day work week in place, that four-day work week needs to play, stay in force forever, I disagree with that concept. And I'm not saying I don't support the four-day work week. I just think we should consider it as part of a more comprehensive review. And let's remember that there is a four-day work week starting Memorial Day to this week. Labor Day, Labor, or June 1st to Labor Day, right? So, uh, um, so there is for the public who is watching, there is a four-day work week happening in the summer months, but this is around the beginning and the end, an extension on both ends. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, I might want to check the minutes. I thought it was to 1, to one September. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe it is because maybe Labor Day yep. falls on 3rd or something. I think Labor Day June falls on 1 3rd. through September 30th. That's no, no, it was, no, amended, no. it was amended to September 1st. Right. Okay, then I have the wrong Or minutes. after Labor Day, September 2nd. Then I have the wrong minutes. minutes. You shouldn't have the minutes that say yeah. that. It says Tuesday, May 21st, Middlesex Select Board Minutes. Yeah, the original, if you read the next sentence, the original motion was that it was set for June amended to September, September 30. And then the actual motion that moved forward was after uh, Labor Day, June September 1st 2nd. to September 2nd. Right, and Labor Day is the second, year. and that's yeah. why. So it does, it There were so many to the second. motions, but I remember yeah. the first was brought out. Yeah. And yeah. June 1st, September 1st, September 1st. <coughs> okay. Um, so I think at this point. Sam has her hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Sam. I just have a, a question. Um, so if we start, so say it's decided, you guys talk about it again, this four day week um if you do decide to change it to five days and we start losing road crew have you looked at how we're going to handle that 
you know, with people having a hard time actually getting and keeping help, I'm sure you're all aware, um, you know, it sounds like one of the reasons why this was changed was because of perception. I'm not sure if that's the only reason or not, but I just want to make sure, you know, that all the residents know, like, if we start losing all of our road crew, um, why and what's going to be done about it, you know, because I feel like if it's going to be a matter of, hey, we took this benefit away um, for whatever reason, and then, you know, or we keep it and we're going to micromanage when you can use your vacation time or whatnot, um, it's not super appealing to want to work for someone like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sam. Um, and again, we there there will be five day work weeks. That I don't think we're talking about moving it consistently to four days. I think it was just three hundred sixty five days. Oops. Are we? No. No. Okay. No, just taking away what's already in place. Yeah, it's sort of the eight the eight, the four weeks on either side that we took away. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think it's a matter of figuring out what summer is. What, yep. You know, is it Memorial Day to Labor Day or is it Memorial Day until the clocks turn back? And, and then also remembering that these guys are out on Christmas Day plowing our roads, up mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock in the morning plowing our roads. And okay. this, is a, this is a nice thing that, you know, they look forward to after having a grueling winter. So what I would propose is, um, and thank you for doing the, the research on the other towns, um, and thank you... Jeff, for your um, advocacy. Um, so I would propose that um, either we spend some time thinking about this and, um, and come back to the table in a couple of meetings to, to sort of revisit this. Um, maybe get some more input from Eric, right, um, about the value of the, the four day work week for these extra spring and, and fall piece of it that, we, that we've eliminated. Yes, sir. I'd be happy to add it to an agenda to the road subcommittee if one of you wants to come in and just have that 18 people kind of tell you how they feel about what they know goes on in town. I mean, it's 18 citizens randomly. Vic? Okay. Um, yeah, I wasn't, I don't know when to bring this up, but anyways, um, I just want to make it clear, and I think Peter brought it up the last time, it seems like um, I'm the bad guy in this letter that's pointed out two or three times. I'm not the only one on the select board that has talked about not caring for the four-day work week going from May 1st to uh, Memorial Day or from Labor Day to November. I'm not the first that did that. It's not my idea, totally. Uh, the other thing is this fear-mongering of, uh, you know, we've had it before in different instances. Peter will tell you. Uh, of people threatening us uh, for uh, not working. And I took it upon myself to talk with Eric because there was a, I, I don't even want to say what the rumor was, uh, a mention of people leaving, that he has no plans of leaving. I did not ask, but it was offered to me by the other two road crews members. One is retiring in seven or eight years, doesn't want to go anywhere, and the other one is very happy, working, glad he's got the job, and says that he, you know, he doesn't really, you know, if you can get, if you can work four days, he'd, you know, rather do it, but he's okay with the, the status quo uh, that we have right now. So, I don't know if I, you know, that's what they said. And I, you know, I kind of believe him. And I will concur with Vic that I'm one of the people, in fact, I, some of the quotes are from me. I distinctly remember saying them. Um, I think that, you know, some of my reservation um, 
around, so I am not at all against four day work weeks. I think four day work weeks can work really well, right? Especially if you've got a situation where, um, you know, you have to travel a far distance and you need to get a lot done in, um, in that time frame and you save on gas, you save on um, the, the, the back and forth time and you get a lot more done in those, in those time frames. I think that I was seeing a pattern last year and it was a pattern of the four day work week being used, vacation hours being used consistently to make it not a four, 10 four hour days, which to me was, you know, yes, people can use their vacation time whenever they want, but some places don't allow you to just take an hour of vacation, right? They may allow you to take a couple hours of personal time, but they, they do sometimes require you to take at least a half a day of vacation. And I think that that was, that felt like um, not the best use of a four 10 hour work week, which is meant to really get in a lot of work, right, in, in that time frame. Um, so I actually did question, are we getting the same value? Because we aren't moving, we're not traveling 50 miles in our trucks to get to a spot. We're traveling one mile to get to a spot, right? So we're not losing that much time during the day. Um, but I but I get, I totally, I'm all about work-life balance, right? I am totally happy for summer four hour, um, or ten four hour days, whatever, four ten hour days. Um, so like I am not, I'm not against that. I just felt that, um, in, in some ways it is considered a benefit and and a benefit is like a reward almost like this is what we can give you and when I felt like that reward was was being somewhat abused it just didn't feel right so that's really where where I came from in agreeing with Vic that you know this 10 four-hour day for half the year is a lot right and especially when um, we have such kooky weather and, you know, oh, we only have four days and we got a grade, but it's going to rain tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, why did we grade? And now it's raining and it's mud, right? So that's really where, where I came from on that, on that. But I am totally open to reevaluating it on, and, and re, um, you know, rethinking, the, extending it on both ends. That's all. Yes, Steve. <clears throat> I'd just make a comment that uh, I'm an advocate for the four-day work week. Uh, I've done it a lot in the past, uh, not just with the town of Middlesex, but with my previous employment. It was a benefit. But I want to make the comment that the select board, apparently the last meeting, has come up with dates from June 1st to whatever it was, September 2nd or whatever it is. And, and I, think the, I think the select board should stick to that for this year and, and work on their policies or employment stuff or how, whatever you work on through the winter before next spring to come up with exactly how that's going to work. Rather than, I mean, I know you mentioned coming up, you know, in another couple of weeks. I've been on the select board. You guys, most of the time, have more than, more than you can handle. So why chew on that anymore? Just it's water over the dam. You've made a decision on the dates. Use those dates for this year and update your policies or whatever. That's my comment. Thank you for that feedback, Steve. I would agree 100% with Steve. Randy agrees, yep. And I would also propose that if we have epic summers like this where the road crew could do a little little extra maybe there's a little carrot bonus of an extra month or two of four ten hour days if they're going above and beyond for us and there's simply no question that they're working hard why not give them a little an extra month or two as a bonus okay <laughs> any other conversation about this ten hour four day week Hearing none, thank you for your comments, Jeff. No action on that. Um, okay, so our next, ooh, I'm really late. Updating the town's personnel policy, action possible. 
Um, given our time frame, we this was basically just on our to-do list. Mm -hmm. So we could table, not table it, but we could put it aside for next week or... Um, so basically, we do this, we start from the beginning and, because you haven't been involved in this, we no. start from the beginning, we review each section, um, and then you know we stop. And then we say, okay, now we're gonna pick it up from here. Yes, Peter. I would just suggest we dedicate you know, an hour and a half of our agenda at one meeting to work on this personnel policy so we don't piecemeal it. And if we need to do an hour and a half at another meeting after that, we can. But dedicate a meeting to doing this, not just having an agenda item for a short period of time. Okay. We just so I'm, I'm proposing we, we definitely pass over it for tonight and make it a bigger item on the agenda at some point in the future. Anyone else agree with that, passing over it for the evening? I'd be fine with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. It'd give me more time to go through it. The yes. only thing I saw was <laughs> it uses sex, and I think at this point it's, it's gender, probably gender identity. Oh, yeah, we could, we could do a little cleanup with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do agree with Peter that, you know, maybe it is just clearing the entire agenda for a meeting well, maybe and, we should have a special and running session. through this to make sure we get through it. My fear of... My fear of passing it over is that we, just keep we dedicate 20 minutes to it in another meeting and we get tied up with other things and we never accomplish the goal. Yep. So I, I would agree with you, Peter, that we should just dedicate a meeting to this and this alone. And it will probably I hate, to, I hate to suggest this and I don't like I don't like extra meetings, especially in the summertime, but you know what, if that's what it takes to get this done, we could do that also. But I think if we just put our heads down and say we're going to deal with this in two meetings and get it done, we can do it. Okay. So, um, Sarah, you and I, I guess, can work together and find like a light day. <laughs> you're going to, uh, so let me just give you an idea of what your schedule is going to look like coming uh, up. Next meeting is going to be probably pretty light. We're going to do um, some dog stuff that does, don't worry, it's not bad dog stuff. And you have a board of abatement hearing. I haven't heard back from them, so that's that. July 2nd is your first meeting in July. You guys might want to talk about whether or not you want to move that. You've got to set the tax rate by July 16th. You've already ordered the envelopes for July 18th. So those are big issues for that. Okay. And then August should be pretty light because we're going to have a statewide primary on one of our meeting nights, I think. And um, and then the end of August might be okay. It would be much easier to have this personnel policy discussion and air conditioning downstairs. You know. Yeah. Is anyone taking vacation and out of town? I was just going to suggest that instead of trying to cram this in that that first week of July, I'd rather do whether it's an extra meeting or whatever at the end of June. I'm going to be gone at the beginning of July. <coughs> You like that idea of an extra meeting? I'm trying no. to no, do an extra uh, Well, an extra meeting means it's today the fourth. Um, it would be the 18th would be our next regular meeting. You don't have really you don't have a packed agenda on the 18th. Let's let's put put aside. Um, you have the fire department. You okay. Have, let's put aside. But let's start with it on the agenda. That way we can't skip over it. Well, let's start with the fire department so we can go to oh, the right. meeting. Yeah. And then let's just do all of the sure. personal calls. In that sounds good. Let's not have an extra meeting. Yeah. Yeah. No, At least for now. Okay. You don't want an extra meeting. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to skip over that. So um, other business, renewing the Washington County Sheriff Department's contract for speed enforcement. Here it is. Um, action likely. So, how much have they spent over our last? Right, so I did the I did the math. I don't know how much they've spent so far, but we have we're bud you're budgeted for twenty five hundred uh, bucks for a year, which averages to uh, forty one hours at their rate of sixty dollars an hour. For what? So, what? You think I'm wrong? Because down here it says to review. The town speed limits. If we don't have that, why do we need this? Because there are other parts. There, there are other towns and there are other parts of town. 
That's what we do have to have. You don't have to, it's just budgeted. I mean, they pull over everybody right around here, down by there. There are parts of our speed ordinance that are okay, there are other parts that suck. But I agree. I mean, Wait, I'm sorry, what is your concern? So what Cheryl's saying is that our speed ordinance is all messed up. Why do we even have them? Oh. Why do we even pay for them? But this, but I think that the past has been that the board appreciates when the sheriff is by the school. Yes. And, you know, and people feel that more there's some presence of a sheriff. Just the presence of them slowing down. I mean, it's, they. The other problem is they don't want to work in the summer because they make more money working on the highways. Yep. And then so they sit there in the winter when no one's speeding because they're sliding off the road. If they did, but it makes people feel better. Okay. But yeah, Cheryl's right about the speed ordinance. Wait, what, what did she say though? It's not. Oh, that, that, yeah, it's not compliance. Yes. Yeah, we know that. But so with this contract, uh, do you, I don't know what you want to do. So if, anyway, that's how it comes down to. It's not even, I can't believe their, their rates are that expensive. 50 bucks. 60. 60 isn't that much. 60? Yeah. I mean, they, come on. Hey, this is 2024. I know. Yeah. That. I remember, I remember when it was like 25. Oh, you guys, come on. The, the $60 is nothing for those. It's nothing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, all you can get is <laughs> one hour double. a year, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but if they're not doing any good and only doing it in the winter time. We only pay are, them. How much they, do we pay them? When they when they when invoice us, which we never seem to spend 2500 do we? Or You've do gone we? down from 5000 to 2500 You've never gone up to 5000 Okay. And I don't think Cheryl, we're down to 2500 Yeah. Uh, yes, my thinking right, but the last it's, bill was it's very $600. How much? The last bill was almost $600, uh, that last one. That was, that was, one that was, was, pretty, that was a pretty weak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I just wonder what, what good are they, I mean, how many tickets are they giving out? But, I think it really was, though, about um, the, again, just traffic. the town seeing it, slowing people down, knowing that, oh, look, we actually do have a little bit of, how much one of them signs at <laughs> Yeah. So $16,000. Oh, yes. oh, yeah, oh, really? oh, yeah, those are so expensive. Right. So what do you oh, want to do? What, what do you, what number do you want to put in the hours if you can only get 41 hours a year? How about 40? A week. It's a, the space is a week. Oh, a week? Um, you can't even make an hour. 0. 0.75. <laughs> <laughs> per week? Well, and that's I mean, what they're asking for, an average weekly. Okay, so what is 52 times? It's, it's almost 42 hours. Total. 52 times. Um, 0.75. How many 0.75. Hours a week? But okay. if they only do it by hour, what's 52 times 60? I've already got it. It's, 50, it's, it's 41 hours. 2,500 divided by 60 is 41 hours. Now you've got 52 oh. hours in a year. Okay. But then you got the mileage, too, so don't forget. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half an hour yes, a week. Yes, Vic. Yes, I think with the um, with the roads, you know, with this hot weather right here, and the roads getting a little better. Uh, this, the traffic speed is picked up. I've been all over this. And they town. make washboards when they speed, don't they, Vic? They do, but uh, unless you get really a lot of chloride on. But anyways, yeah. if they're not going to do it this time of year, there's really no reason to do it at all. So you don't want to have a speed. You don't want to even. Have it's a not going to do it during the summer because they're. I think. I think what I heard, and I think I agree with that, is that they're out doing the they construction. Make the phones about that. Oh, so can I make a motion that we skip it for one year and see what happens? Whoa! Oh, Whoa! Whoa! Like Zara, it's Charles. I got a question. <laughs> now, are they? Do they charge? Because I had to deal with them during an incident on Center Road over the winter. Do they charge for when they come out to an accident and stuff on our roads? Or no, we're that's just, not. This is just speed only. This is just speed. speed. They're sitting there idling, waiting they, for somebody right, to... They charge yeah, the hourly rate plus mileage, though. Okay. So 45 minutes, they go into that round that circle twice. Up, <laughs> up, From here all the way around to Shady Reel. Peter, what are your thoughts? Do we do what Zara... The, the bold I, movement... I think, I think the speeding situation, the way it exists now, or the enforcement situation is worthless and it's a joke. And you know, we've we've renewed the contract historically. I think it brings very little value. We don't spend a lot of money on it. The only question I have is the public the public perception. I mean, we've had a lot of complaints over the years about speeding. Um, I kind of hate just to just to ditch it. And then people say, well, what are you doing about speeding? Well, we have no good alternative for the speeding. Right. 
So really? I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence. I mean, we cut it back. Uh, I don't know. I. My suggestion would be to revise the contract and ask for those 40 hours within the time frame of, you know, the start of school and Thanksgiving or something like that and say, you know, if that's our focus, is what I heard, like people want to see it around the school zone and whatnot. The weather is still nice enough where, you know, people are probably leaving their house a little bit late, want to get their kids to school, show a presence then if you want to show a presence at all. So that would be my suggestion, is to revise it and allocate the 40 hours between the start of school and Thanksgiving or something to that effect. Yeah, I actually I actually think that's a good idea, Randy. The only problem with that is, you know, what we, what we keep running into is they don't have people available necessarily to work in that time frame. But I guess what we do is we say that's the contract, and if you can't provide the service, you can't provide the service. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no different than us skipping at that point, right? And we've given them the opportunity. Um, if they don't provide it, it's money unspent. So, so is that going to be manageable on their time frame? Are they going to know that? <laughs> like, Are we gonna talk? do they look up on a, on a database and say, Middlesex only allows us to patrol between September 1st and... It's, I mean, it's not a requirement. It's if you have the capacity, you know, this is when we'd like to see it. I don't know. I'm just wondering how that's going to be managed on their end, and then yeah. they're going to come out in the middle of winter and bill us, and we're going to have a meeting here in cold February and go, we got a bill from the sheriff's office, and we told them they could only come. Yes, Cheryl. OK, now I can tell you, I live on Government Hill, Shady River Road there. Cars fly down there all the time. I have never, and since I've lived here, <laughs> since 2005, 2006, ever seen Washington County Sheriff's Department on Shady Real Road. I have never, ever seen them. Really? Them. And they are, fl people fly, to, when they hit the top of that hill up there and come down, they're flying down that road. So, and then we're sitting here telling so people, wait a minute here, we're gonna, they're gonna be in town for 45 minutes a day and they're not. These people are coming off not a day, and they're not coming. Yeah, at least. So, right. <laughs> they're not so, coming. So what good are they going to do? Right. They, they wouldn't really come. It's just in the contract. They would come and sit for two hours. And right. But, I mean, yeah. a lot of the traffic, though, is people coming from Montclair cutting across to Worcester, and they hit Shady Rail Road hard. Yeah. But if he's not there, then it's not doing right. any good to keep paying him. I will say that I do see them on Molly Supel, the other side of Shady Rail, over by the school. Um, I've seen him at the school. Yeah. I wish he yeah. there. <laughs> uh, that part for Cheryl is that's where the, the speed ordinance is screwed up. It's yes, it is. Far oh, okay. yeah. That's why they don't sit there. Yeah. Yeah. So I do have a suggestion. Perhaps what we do is we um, set the money aside in our capital plan to buy speed signs, the solar speed signs, which we know are sometimes difficult to manage, but they actually do work, mm -hmm. right? And that maybe, you know, we, we invest money and save money for a speed solar sign on Shady Rill that slows people down. We'd have to have that put in front of the voters, wouldn't we? To reallocate the money that's set aside in the budget for this to uh, a specialized purpose. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. What about uh, rental of one of the uh, trailers so that you can move it around town? Because oh, right. there's a few other spots that. Yeah. But maybe this is speed enforcement. You, you have it in speed enforcement. You just can't put it into. You can't take that 2500 Oh, so you can invest it in speed enforcement. Do you know how much those things cost, Charles? What? Like more than 2500 for a week? Um. No, no, I can't. I can remember. research it for you. I mean, maybe that is something that we do is we use the money there just to or, see. Or we go to one of their auctions and buy a police vehicle. Let me <laughs> you <laughs> have to tour around town and just set idea. places with a blow up doll in it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> That's great. Hopefully, no one notices it. We'll just say, okay, Middlesex really has some speed enforcement. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think right now it sounds like we don't want to sign this. Okay. Yeah. And um, either the money goes back into the budget or perhaps we um, consider Charles's idea of, you know, renting one of these portable things just to 
get people thinking again, right? Like the beginning um, of the school year. Yeah, beginning of the school year. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Because you're right, they do fly. People drive way too fast, and they drive way too fast on the dirt roads, causing the washboards that then the road crew has to grade. Government Hill Road is like a. Do you live on Government Hill? I do, right at the bottom. So. Okay, yeah, all right, I know where you live. Yeah. And, and I'm happy to have a camera at my house. I'm right across from French. I see people speed by, yep. back Here's up. OK. <laughs> you go out there with a blow dryer oh. with the old man on Facebook. It's amazing. <laughs> <Blow dryer. laughs> All righty. Moving to, through other business, correspondence to Mead Road. So um, Samantha reached out to me to ask me if there had been any movement on the yellow flags that are hanging off of a tree. Um, and so I, re as, as I have repeatedly done, apparently three times in a row, not contacted Evelyn's lawyer, but rather Evelyn directly, which Evelyn keeps reminding me that I should be contacting her lawyer directly with any requests that I have. But instead, but she CC'd the lawyer, so apparently the lawyer saw it. Um, and, uh, and I asked her to, um, could she remove, first I said to our road, I sent an email to Vic and um, Eric. Eric, and I said, uh, could you potentially remove those flags because when it's windy, it obstructs the vision of the drivers who use that road. When it's windy and they're all flying, flying out. Um, and so I asked and I said to Evelyn, which I should have said to her lawyer, that when it's windy, these things fly, right? Um, and then she sent me a picture of 10 mile an hour wind, which I don't think is windy, but maybe it is, I don't know. Is 10 mile an hour a lot of wind? No. And they were not blowing. So I wasn't sure why she was sending it at 10 miles an hour when really the issue was but it's like 40 miles an hour wind, right, that it blows. So I sent an email. Um, I did not get any response from the road crew whether or not they would do it, and Evelyn uh, basically said, "I, you have to go through my lawyer. So it was a fruitless conversation, Samantha, and I, that's the update on that. Okay. Any questions about that or comments? Yes, Peter. I hate to say this again, but I think we should get back to the subject of throwing up that rope. And not just because of the flags, because we've got a potential issue with it. Bridget's out. Um, we need to deal with that. And we keep, we keep pushing it off, hoping things are going to get better, but they're not getting any better. OK. I don't, know. I don't know what that means. Throwing up means. Um, uh, turning it into um, a private trail. No, turning it into a legal trail. Do you want legal to trail. Legal trail. Trail. Yeah. trail. Um, but yeah. what is it? What is it that we did with um, like Merritt Road? That wasn't throwing it up. Yeah. And then it becomes a private driveway. Those yeah. those five were private driveways. Those were private those, But you did, uh, you did um, not discontinue. You did Don't downgrade remember. part of. Um, Dolan, Dolan Road. That, that with Boldick slash Tangletown, you, because that be, became impossible. So you just right. took that down to the legal trail, so you retained the right of way. Okay, and then made it a legal trail. Correct. Okay. But that way you still don't have to meet the state requirements. Does it affect our funding from the state based on the class of roads? Yes. This is a class four road already, isn't it? A class four? Anything anyway. Yes. So it was actually a class three road, and it was changed like. 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Okay, so it was a class. Do we get funding for class four roads? No. No. Right. So, so it does. So the answer would be no. It doesn't affect our funding. But it's a class three road. What we do have, however, is an obligation to maintain that bridge. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is no bridge there, but yes, that's. Well, there was there was a bridge there. No, now there isn't. All all I'm saying is, you know, that's a potential risk that somebody could come to us and say, hey. You know, it's a class four road, yes, but you're supposed to maintain the bridge culvert, whatever it is, and we're not doing it, and I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, 
So I don't want to I don't want to make this personal between the landowners, but it does not make sense for us to have that as a class four road. And if we're going to keep it as a class four road, we need to understand that sooner or later, somebody's going to come to us and say, hey, you need to replace that bridge or put a culvert in there or whatever. And to clarify, Peter, I think you're referring to actually the space that continues through the woods Correct. and goes into the field Correct. and turning that into a trail. You're not, are you referring to all of Mead Road through yeah. to the not, ne not necessarily, but I think my concern is the bridge, so yes. Um, but if it makes sense to make the whole, I mean, we, we need to get back to it and make a decision what we're going to do, is all I'm saying. And, and uh, we're never, I don't think we're ever going to resolve uh, the squabble going on there between neighbors. I just don't think there's any resolution to it. I mean, we did promise we were going to grade the road. We haven't graded it to the best of my knowledge. Um, we should do that um, sometime this summer if we can. Uh, but yeah, grading know, I don't want to build that bridge. I can tell you that. Okay, Randy. So uh, just two things. Uh, downgrading from the bridge towards the interstate to a trail makes sense to address the the bridge concern that Peter has. Um, I guess I guess I'm curious to understand, you know, we've communicated three or four different requests and there's still no action. Um, I guess I'd like to understand where uh, where we stand with having a road crew just go out and remove it. Re remove remove the flags or the, the obstruction that's hanging from the tree and just you know, if they're, they've been asked three or four times now um, through both verbal and written communications. We have? The, the landowners, oh. um, and Liz said that she requested that the town, that the road crew go out and, and uh, remove it. I mean, at this point, I feel like that's where, that's what we should be doing. Um, the you? landowner obviously is not doing it they're not going to follow our requests. Um, it's a potential hazard. I think we just need to need to make that call and, and move forward with it. Like if you were, if this were on a class three road, for example, the road crew would have removed it. Like you don't, know, like you know, these are these are things that distract drivers, right? Like it just would be like, what's that doing there, right? The road crew would be like, oh, you know, it's this tree right next to the road filled with yellow tags you would and it had no purpose you would probably remove it and so if if the claim is that the that the person who uses the driveway or their friends or whoever are distracted by it and you know it's in their line of vision when the wind is blowing that would be i think a reasonable request of our road crew to address an issue that is obstructing the right of way or the road it's in the road actually i mean everything that we're talking about is in the road their house is in the road technically right we're not asking to remove their house or their front steps right so could there be action on that victor i'm not going to go do it all righty maybe eric will if I well, ask him. we talked it over Okay, but said, no one responded to me when I sent the email. Right, off. we didn't. We didn't. I talked it over with Eric. Okay. And we said it's just too much of a hornet's nest down there, and we don't want to get involved. All righty. So then. if you want to take rep <coughs> reprimandive action towards us, go ahead. But really, I mean, you know, it, it, it's been going on and on and on and on, and this is tit for tat and tit for tat. I mean, I'm not saying that one is right and the other is wrong, but I'm just telling you what we said. Right. And if you want to reprimand us, do so. I think at the end of the day, it's not about the tit for the tat. It's, it's the hazard that exists. We didn't see the hazard. So that's the issue that I have. Okay. Why don't you go down and remove them? I absolutely will. If the select board wants to direct me to do it, Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we have Randy Drury go <laughs> down to Mead Road. Can we put this on the, can we vote on this? 
No, it's not worn. It's, it's not worn. worn. It's not worn. Yeah. You don't and need. I just have a quick question because sure. I haven't seen any of this. I've heard oh, some. I can some. Show you. Oh, a video. Oh, that'd be great. Um, I think I'm more with Peter, where we just declassified the road and. If that's a separate. That's a, uh, just yeah. so that thing, that's a big okay. process. There's a, there's it takes a, bridge, a minute or two. There's a bridge beyond this point, and what's being talked about being degraded is beyond where this. Substructure beyond sits. where the problem is, yes. anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is. Oh, I would just. I would just say one more thing. We agreed, and Victor, I believe the road department agreed that we would grade that road. <laughs> And we promised to do it, and we didn't do it. And that's upsetting to me. I mean, we told those people we would grade it. I see you waving your hand, but let's grade the goddamn road, please. It was discussed this morning. All right. And they plan on doing that maybe, I think it's tomorrow, because we have to, we have to do the wildlife management unit on Upper Barnett. The state called us, and they're going to pay for the material. Again. Again, yeah, yeah. Charles was over there originally. Yes, I was. And once they get down there, I said, you know, we keep forgetting this, Eric. We got to do it. And he said, maybe I can get over there tomorrow. Okay, so maybe. Well, it's not like. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe at next meeting. <laughs> we'll have it done. We vote to have Randy go and remove the yellow tags. You know, can I just say something? Yes. That's not really something you need a select board motion for. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so either. All right. Good. Okay. Yes, Samantha. I just want to mention it's nice to hear about grading, um, but my concern if you come out now to grade is there are a lot of things that are in the 22 feet. Um, I haven't been bringing it to your attention um, because they're not, I mean, it's, it's in violation of what everyone agreed to, yes, but it's, I kind of just didn't want to deal with it. But it's going to be an issue if you grade and they have something up to the road. So on the side of the road, so it's, it's, it's going to make you shift. So I have not put, since we had that meeting and you discussed nothing in the 22 feet and we all agreed to it, I have not put anything in the 22 feet. However, the neighbors have like a flower pot or something like that. A bunch of stuff. There's probably at least eight things there. Okay. Um, which, like I said, I haven't brought it to your attention. Um, but if you are going to grade the road, that's a concern because I don't think it's acceptable to shift the road over because they're You're not listening. You're stuff that's in the grade. You know. Yeah. So that, what's the policy then? If we go to grade a road and somebody has stuff in the road, we grade over it. Do we grade over it, or do they get um, some type of ticket, some type of... No, there's no tickets here. Yeah. Right, but some type of... You can't do that. Yes, Nick? Would, would, would you rather... And, and I'm, I'm not being sarcastic or anything. I'm just clear. Would you rather for us to wait until you address those things that are in the road? How would I address them? It's, it's the roadway. It's, it's Let's grade over. something I come to you guys to address. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't well, I mean, know how I don't I know what is in there, and I, I haven't, I mean, I'm sure Eric will drive down there, and if he can't do it, he, he, may, he may well move him. Right, yeah, I, I don't know the process. I just know that I do have the survey pins. I believe everyone agreed to them. You know, the, the map is recorded. I actually put additional pins in to capture the curvature that we kind of talked about. Um, so I've taken all the steps to hire a professional surveyor, them to say where they feel the center of the road is. My concern is I don't want that to change just because, you know, the neighbors decided to agree to the 22 feet and now they're not. And now they have items up to the road. Um, again, I don't, I, I don't have items there. Um, and I just don't want the road to shift from the survey pins because they're not able to go to where the center of the road should be. And is. Are these items, um, like, can you hand lift them up? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just curious, because, I mean, one thing that we could do just as a courtesy is to send a note to the lawyer saying, we're coming to grade this week, the things need to be out of the road or we'll remove them so that we can grade. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a solution. And, uh, and if they don't, then we remove it. At least we've communicated that and said, 
you know, we're going to be grading in the next month. You need to remove these things or we will remove them. Excellent idea. Thank you. Okay. Adding the language that we will not be responsible for yeah. any damaged property. Okay. okay. Yep. So I'm kind of curious to see what that stuff is. I might just try to go on there and take a look <laughs> and see what this stuff is that's in the road. Um, okay. So, yes, Sarah, do you have a comment? Uh, yes. You know, do you want me to write the letter and send it over to you for a review and then send it uh, For the lawyer? Yeah. Yeah, sure. That would be great. Do you want to I was just going to send an email, so, but if you want to Okay. Check. No, that's fine. Do you want me to send it certified mail or just mail? Or um, well, I think he accepts things in, uh, we're doing this to the lawyer. Right. I think he accepts emails. I mean, I, I don't Can't think this warrants a certified email, letter. Email. I'm just trying to figure out what you want. Yeah, um, I think I'll send an email as a select board chair and okay. just say that we um, have plans in the next 30 days mm -hmm. to grade. We don't have the exact date, Is it but there are some through? things in the road that are going to be graded over or destroyed in our grading process, so could you please remove them? And we will not be contacting you the day in advance to let you know when we're grading because that's just that's not reasonable. I'd put Would you nice be that we're removing the flag? And yep. we'll be removing the flag. Yeah, yep. and that we've tried to grade previously, and it's that they're holding up our processes. That's not really true. Okay, that's not really true. But yeah, okay. we're going to grade this week. So, so can you say that it's been brought to our attention? That uh, there are things in the, that that would be. In I, I'll just go up there on my way home and look. Okay. I'll just see, and then I'll say, you know, there are things in the roadway. We know there are things in the roadway that okay. are going to prevent us from grading the full. You know, we're not going to grade 22 feet because that's adding a road. But you know that. So okay, so I will do that. Um, all right. Uh, moving on. Is uh, is there anything more to talk about? Okay. Um, okay, so this is um, just an update for VIA and our four, or what was it, 60, 50,000? 60, 65. 65 is what we agreed on? Okay. So um, I had a good meeting with VIA, um, just the two of us, uh, to clarify some confusing email that they sent us and it turns out that they had sort of confused us I think with another town which had me asking questions that were like I don't quite understand what you mean right mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that Moortown is doing the same exact thing we are doing and they're working with VIA and they're a town on the river right and they're doing their town hall so like it's kind of this identical uh, thing with just some some differences so um, basically um, they are on target for um, for doing our um, our town hall design and having it ready for us at the end of August, so that we can sort of go, we can review it. Um, this is we're also there's some funding opportunities for um, a potential renovation of town hall, um, and I'm going to be working with Sandy and I have applied for a couple of things. So one thing we applied for, which was um, a very very easy application and then you have a personal interview with the per with the this is for um, the preservation um, towns or vibrant villages or something it's really around the focus of the community space so this grant would be considering our renovation in in the pieces that involve the community space, which is essentially the upstairs, if you look at the design, not the downstairs municipal. So they really don't fund that municipal stuff, but they do things that that are community spaces. That can be, this, this grant opportunity is quite generous. It's a couple hundred thousand dollars. It is, the next step is if we're in, if they like what they heard from us at our interview, and they and they've gotten a copy of the um, you know the um, architectural um, copy that was done. They will invite us to a second round. That second round is about nine applicants. And if they like us within that nine applicants, they choose a couple of applicants. Sandy has a hopeful sixty percent chance that we'll get it. So that's better than forty percent. Yes. Are you done? Yes. No, so, but I mean, I'm not done with the IA, but yes, I'm done with that. Comment. So uh, this, the, I've been talking to the staff downstairs, the planning staff, and we have some major 
changes we would like to propose for the upstairs that may affect the community space. Okay, good to know. Okay, so yes, and that would be something that has to, um, I should get in touch with VIA to say that you have some changes to the space upstairs. Yeah, there's not nearly enough for planning or the listers. It's, okay. It's, there's nothing actually. Yep, okay. So um, that might be turning that corner office space into a lister space is what you're saying. I have some ideas. I've already redrawn everything. Just talking to people. Well, okay. sorry, but we have like a whole no. de part dedicated to a lobby, and we don't have one planning room. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm glad that you're. I just like that you've now taken on the role of architect. <laughs> well, no one else was going to do it. Everyone was complaining, so I'm like, okay, why don't we just do this? Okay, so that needs to be communicated ASAP. Okay. So what I, if you would do me a favor and you could, you know, draw and send. Draw and send. Yes, okay. um, and then. Uh, so that Megan and her team can be aware that there's okay, potential. I mean, it's not adding to the footprint. It's really yeah. more about a redesign. We've got like little meetings and breakout spaces. Okay. That we don't and there's no square, like we have not talked about square footage or anything like that, right? This is, and, and there's still going to be a space where the community can gather, yeah. right? And there's still going to be a bathroom and an, and yep. an elevator that community can use. So I think that there's still, even with a re redirection yep. of some not of the space. Okay. Um, and then, um, and then there's another grant um, that is going to. That's the um, um, community service, not community service block grant. The other block grant, um, community development block grant, um, which is through ACCD. Again, that is that would be specifically around um, elevator, ADA accessibility. Those grants tend to be for um, lower income communities, but there is a box that you can check that instead says immediate, immediate need, sort of like a, um, or a um, crisis, <laughs> right? And our crisis is, is the elevator, right? So you can sort of bypass that. But 75% of their money goes to communities of need, so there's potential that we can apply, that we will apply for that um, regardless. Um, and that would be for the elevator piece. So anyway, I'll be working with Dave to help understand how much the elevator piece is based on the work that VIA did and had broken down costs. And so Dave and I will sit down and uh, figure that out so when we do this pre-application for the ACCD grant that we have some figures and numbers that we can throw out there. So that's where we are right now on the VIA. Yes, sir. I just want to thank you very much for doing all this. And well, and Sandy, too. Sandy's Sandy been super well. helpful. That's really great. Yep. It's, it's a void that you guys are stepping in. Mm -hmm. We really, we here in the town hall appreciate it. Yeah, and well, and also Zara with her grants and road yep, crew. I mean, I think it's, yeah, all you're doing is, this specifically, and it's you. Yeah, so thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Liz. Okay. Um, okay, so next is orders. We have the orders. I'll make sure I sign them this time, Cheryl. <laughs> um, are there any other matters that come before the board? Because our next thing is that we will be going into executive session, and you, will, you guys will have to leave, and Oracle will have to set up. Are there any other matters that come before the board? Um, no. What, the only thing that I wanted to add, which I sort of blurted out, was that um, I think we really could use a website redesign. So I did want to add that to our goals. You know, maybe it's not something we do this year, but that it's added to our future goals as well. Um, I would I would include that with the IT mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really, it just is neat. It's so antiquated looking, and you know, there's opportunities for it to be so much easier and for other people to be able to upload things onto it and yeah okay um, alrighty so if that so we will be re-adjourning but you would have to leave if you want to come back you can um, but we will be uh, temporarily well first you have to make a you have, oh. to, you have to make a motion okay with somebody saying motion having a little bit of okay. discussion go motion 
who's going to be included in that? Right, so, okay. So the executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee, provided that the public body shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public officer or employee in an, an open meeting and shall explain the reason for its final decision during the open meeting as permitted under 1 BSA statute 313A3 action possible during public portion to follow this session. So we go into private conversation, then we come back and we potentially make a decision. Correct. Okay? So, but while we're in the private section, you leave. <laughs> well, so you need a motion to order to end. So I need a motion to end the meeting and mo go into executive session. All motion to end the meeting. Oh, motion. Okay, yeah. so Peter yeah. moves, Zara All seconds. seconds. Peter moves there a second. Yep. Good job. Thanks. All those in favor of um, temporarily oh. stopping the meeting. I'm assuming that you, this moving. is just going to be the select board. You don't need me. You don't need anyone. No.